virulence versus saturation. So there seems to be a never ending debate regarding the differences between the virulence and the saturation slider in Photoshop or even Lightroom or Adobe Premiere Pro or any other Adobe Creative Cloud software for that matter. I have seen so many contradicting opinions among many Photoshop experts and even Adobe's own official website doesn't provide any kind of concrete details regarding the actual working principles of vibrance and saturation and how they differ from each other and when we should use what. So I have decided to do a bunch of experiments myself in Photoshop in order to find out how they react in different scenarios in a hope to be able to come out with a definitive conclusion by the end of it. Now if you are looking for a short answer then let me tell you that Whoever says the vibrant slider is a toned down version of the saturation slider and it doesn't affect the skin tones that much. Whereas on the other hand, the saturation slider impacts all the pixels in a similar way. Regardless of the fact if the pixels are less saturated or high saturated, then they are absolutely correct, but they give you half the information. Now, if you want to know what kind of an experiment I did and what are my findings from it, and most importantly, what are the real differences between the vibrance and the saturation slider in Photoshop, then make sure to watch this video till the end. Hello guys, my name is Shubhadi Mondol. I'm an independent filmmaker and an equally passionate guitarist. On this channel, I upload short films, music videos, photo and video editing tutorials, as well as detailed guitar tutorials. So if you are new here and are interested in any of these topics, then definitely consider subscribing by clicking on the big red subscribe button down there. And also click the bell icon next to it to turn on notifications so that you don't miss any updates whenever I upload a new video. So getting all those things out of the way, let's get started with the video. Okay, so let's see what we can do in Photoshop to find out the actual differences between vibrance and saturation. So here I have already opened up Photoshop. Let's go to file and click on new. I would like to open up a new document. Here the width and the height doesn't matter. Right now it's set to 800 into 1080 and the resolution is at 720. So that will do for now. Let's click on OK. So it has created the new document for us. Now for the actual experiment, what I would like to do is I'll create a gradient with all the six colors and apply the vibrance and saturation one by one to find out how they actually interact with the pixels. Now to create the gradient, I'll select the gradient tool and click on the color picker and it will open up this dialog box. Here you can see Photoshop already has a built-in preset called the spectrum. And if you click on it, you get all the six colors as a preset. Now if you click on the red, and click on this color, you'll see that this is an absolute red color with a saturation value of 100% and also the brightness value is at 100%. Let's click on OK. Now let's see the magenta and click on this. You can see the hue is at 300 degree, the saturation is at 100% and the brightness is also at 100%. Let's check the blue color. You can see the hue is at exactly 60 degree less from 300 which is 240 degree and the saturation and the brightness both are at 100%. Let's click on OK. Let's see the cyan. You can see it's also 60 degree less from the blue color which was at 240 degree and the cyan is at 180 degree. The saturation and the brightness both are at 100%. So that's great. Let's click on OK. Let's check out the green color. The hue is at 120 degree which is exactly 60 degree less than 180. The saturation and brightness are both on 100%. Let's click on OK. And finally let's check out the yellow color. So it's at 60 degree and the saturation and the brightness are both at 100%. Let's click on OK. So this is a perfect gradient of all the six primary colors RGB and CMY. Red, green, blue and cyan, magenta, yellow. So this will be perfect for our experiment. Let's click on OK. Now we can see this gradient has been selected. Now all I have to do is place the gradient on my canvas. So you can see now we have all the colors and all are at 100% saturation and 100% brightness value. Now for our first experiment, let's take a vibrance adjustment layer. And for that, we have to click on this vibrance adjustment layer. So you can see this has created this vibrance adjustment layer. Now, first, I'll decrease the saturation slider to minus 100 to see how it affects all the colors. Let's see. Well, well, well. So as you can see, the saturation slider is affecting the different hues differently. Let's click on our foreground color to open up the color picker. This will help us understand the colors better. Now, if I click and drag my mouse over this whole spectrum, and while I do so, if you keep an eye on the saturation and the brightness option, you will see what are the actual saturation and the brightness values of these pixels. Let's see. And if you remember, this was the red pixels. So you can notice decreasing the saturation value to minus 100, it has a different effect on the red pixels. It decreases its saturation value to 0%, but decreases the brightness value only to 57%. Now, if we move on, you can see 
as we keep on moving towards the blue pixels, you can see at the exact blue level, the saturation has a completely different effect. So we can conclude decreasing the saturation value to minus 100, it decreases the saturation and the brightness values to zero for the absolute blue pixels. And now if we keep moving on, and as we keep going towards the yellow pixels, you can see the brightness value is increasing. So the cyan, green and the yellow pixels are at brightness value 87% and the absolute yellow pixels are at okay 100%. All right. So you can see the saturation slider is considering the blue pixels as dark pixels and the yellow pixels as bright pixels. Now if we click on OK and reset the saturation slider and decrease the vibrance slider to minus 100. Okay, so you can see right away it has a different effect on the hues. And we have also noticed the saturation slider decreased the saturation value of all the pixels to zero. It only affected the brightness values differently. Now let's see what does the vibrance slider do. Now again, if we bring up the color picker and do as we did before, well, you can see it has a linear effect. It has decreased the saturation to 46% and not to 0%. Even though I have decreased the vibrance slider to minus 100, still in terms of saturation, it does not turn the pixels to absolute zero. It obviously reduces the saturation values of the individual pixels, but it does not reduce them to absolute zero. So obviously right away we can see the vibrance slider has a lesser impact on the pixels. And we can also see that if your original pixels are at 100% value and if you decrease the vibrance slider to minus 100, then it does not affect the brightness values of the pixels. Whereas we have seen that the saturation slider definitely has an impact on the brightness values of the pixels and that too different impacts on the different hues. So right away, this is an interesting finding. Now reset it once again. Now what we can do is we can take a different gradient with 50% saturation and brightness values for all the different colors and we can repeat the same experiment on that. So let's create a custom gradient and to do that once again select the gradient tool and click on this color picker and here all I have to do is click on the individual colors and turn the saturation and the brightness values to 50% and I have to do this for all the colors. So here all I have done is change the saturation and the brightness values of all the individual colors to 50%. I didn't change the actual hue angles of any of the colors. Let's click on OK. Select this layer and place the gradient over here. So this is our gradient which has all the six primary colors, red, green, blue and cyan, magenta, yellow. But all the colors are at 50% saturation value and also 50% brightness value. Now let's see how the vibrance and the saturation sliders impact these colors. So let's open up the vibrance property. Now before changing the sliders, let's try to guess from our previous experiment what can be the results. So first of all, I'll decrease the saturation slider to minus 100 and if we do so, I'm sure it will decrease the saturation value of all the pixels to zero, but it will have different impacts on the brightness of the different hues. And we can also guess that the blue color will be darker and the yellow color will be lighter. So let's decrease the saturation to minus 100. So as we have guessed, the blue color is darker and the yellow color is lighter. Let's check out with the color picker. So you can see the saturation value for all the pixels are at zero, but the brightness values are different for different pixels. The red pixels are considered as mid-tones and it has medium effect on the brightness values. The blue pixels are considered as darker pixels and it gets greater impact from the saturation slider. And cyan, magenta and the green pixels are considered lighter and the yellow pixels are considered as the lightest. Great. Now let's see what impact the vibrance slider has. So close this color picker window, reset the saturation slider and decrease the vibrance slider to minus 100. So we can already see it's unable to turn all the pixels to black and white. And if we open up the color picker, we'll have a better idea. So let's see. So you can see the vibrance slider has a consistent effect on all the pixels regardless of their actual hue. You can see the saturation is at 20, 21, 22, this range and the brightness is at 43, 44, this range. So we can see when the brightness value is less than 100%, the vibrance slider has an impact on the brightness, but it has very less but consistent effect on all the pixels regardless of their hue. And it obviously has less impact on the saturation as well. 
So the main difference that we can see is the saturation slider impacts the different hues differently. It has more impact and it also affects the brightness values of the pixels. Whereas the vibrant slider does not affect the brightness values of the pixels that much and it also has lesser impact on the saturation of the pixels as well. So this is how the vibrance and the saturation slider actually works when decreasing. Now let's see if we increase the sliders what kind of impact these have on these pixels. So let's close this window and let's increase the vibrance to 100%. So as you remember these were originally at 50% saturation and 50% brightness value and I have increased the vibrance slider to plus 100. Now let's see with the color picker what it actually did. This pixel was at 50% saturation value and 50% brightness value. Now if I click on this you can see it has increased the saturation value and it has also increased the brightness value but not much. It was originally at 50% and by increasing the vibrance slider to 100, the vibrance slider has increased the brightness value of the red pixels to 52% only. Let's see what it did for the other pixels. Okay, so you can see the vibrance slider has very little impact on the brightness of the pixels. And here you can see an anomaly. When decreasing, the vibrant slider acts differently and when increasing, it's acting differently. While decreasing, the vibrant slider impacts all the colors in a similar way. But when increasing, you can see it increases the saturation value of the green, blue, cyan, all these pixels more, but it does not increase the red pixels or the orange pixels that much. And as you can guess, our skin tone lies in these tones. So now it's been proven that when increased, the vibrant slider has less effect on the skin tones. Right, now close this dialog box and see what the saturation slider does. Let's reset this and increase the saturation slider to plus 100. We can see right away it has much more impact than the vibrant slider and it's also impacting the brightness of the pixels much more. Let's check out. Okay, so originally the pixels were at 50% saturation value and you can see when increased the saturation slider affects the blue pixels less and affects the other pixels much more. You can see it increases the saturation value of the red pixels the most but the brightness value is not that affected. And if we move on you can see for the blue pixels the brightness value is getting more impact but the saturation value is not that affected. And if we move on further it's increasing the saturation value for these colors the cyan, green and the yellow to 100% and it does not affect the brightness values of these colors that much, right? So we can understand one thing from this experiment that the brightness of a pixel also has an impact on the perceived saturation of that pixel, especially for blue colors and the yellow colors. The blue is naturally considered as a dark color and the yellow is naturally considered as a bright color. And Photoshop's algorithm works in such a way that when increasing and decreasing, it balances the saturation and the brightness values of the different hues in such a way we feel the perceived saturation is changed in a linear way. But actually it follows a very complicated algorithm and to conclude in simple language we can say that the saturation slider affects the different pixels differently. It also changes the saturation value and the brightness value of the individual pixels. Whereas the vibrant slider does not have that much of an impact on the brightness values of the pixels. And also the vibrance and the saturation slider acts differently when increasing and decreasing. When decreasing to minus 100, the saturation slider will turn the saturation value of all the pixels to zero regardless of their hue. But conversely, if the saturation slider is increased to 100, it does not increase the saturation value to 100 for all the pixels. As we can see here, you can see only the cyan, green and the yellow pixels are turned to 100% but the red pixel is turned to around 90% and the brightness is increased a tad bit. Whereas the saturation of these colors are at 100% but the brightness is at 55% and for the blue color the saturation is at 61% and the brightness is at 65%. That means the blue color gets less affected. Or in other words, turning the saturation and the brightness level of the blue pixels a little bit gives the perception 
description of a bigger change. Now, if I have to conclude, then I'd say, if you want to turn an image into black and white, then you have to use the saturation slider. And if you want to boost the colors of your image in a subtle way without affecting the skin tones, then you should definitely use the vibrant slider. And if you want to enhance all the colors of an image, then you can use the saturation slider. It definitely has a much more pronounced impact on the image. And now that you have understood the concept of both the vibrance and the saturation slider, you may also use both the sliders in conjunction to achieve a much more desired result. So let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are about this experiment and whether you think that we have been able to find out the real differences between the vibrance and the saturation slider at all. I'd love to know your thoughts. So if you have liked this video and learned something new today, then definitely give this video a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. So that's it for today, guys. I'll see you in the next video.